When we deal with the New Age movement and Shirley MacLaine, we are dealing actually with religious atheism. They say there is no personal God who is personal and infinite, who has revealed himself in Scripture and in Jesus Christ. We deny the existence of the Christian God. Well, then what's left? The world. But we don't want to give up the word God because that's a religious term. So we'll simply say the word God encompasses all that is. I'm God. You're God. We're all God but not in the sense that the flesh is God, but again, if God is mine and all is God, then all is mine. And there is a, a, a tendency to deny the existence of evil, to deny the existence of pain and suffering. So on her television series, when she stood there at the ocean and she watched the waves and she put out her, her arms and no, I won't get them. And she put it out. Do you remember what she said? I am God. I am um, now, she didn't mean she alone as a personal goddess, but she wanted us all to chant, we are the only God. And see, what I said at that moment to my wife, and I looked at Shirley, I said, Shirley, walk on. You see those waves? Walk on, honey. <laughs> walk on. Let's see you go. Right on. <laughs> there was one other who knew he was God, and he walked on those waters. Well, having examined over a thousand books dealing with the subject of what happens after you die, I think it would be appropriate to define reincarnation as cosmic recycling on a grand scale. But we're not talking about recycling aluminum cans that keep coming back. It's that the human soul does not go to heaven or to hell as the Bible teaches. But the soul is reborn into another Bible, a body, thus you are reincarnated, re-enfleshed. Now, according to orthodox reincarnation, that can be an insect, it can be an animal, it can be a plant, it can be a rock. According to a few Western New Age types who love the idea of evolution and progress, they say once you've gone from being a rock and you were a good rock, very good. <laughs> then you became a carrot, and you were a nice carrot, and you didn't do anything bad, bad karma. Then you became the rabbit, and if you were fuzzy and sweet, then you became the fox, and you finally reached and became a human being, and you cannot slip back down, and this is Edgar Cayce and some of the more uh, westernized reincarnationists, uh, from that point, you come back as a human being, a male, a female, whatever it is, until you reach the point you have paid off your karmic debt uh, by your suffering. You fly off the wheel and you get absorbed back into nothing. You see, you were nothing when you began. Your problem is that you think you are something, and your only salvation is when you become nothing. Now, this reincarnation or recycling they have only four arguments, though a thousand variations, but it's only four arguments. One, reincarnation solves the problem of evil, but it doesn't. They say, well, the reason you're suffering in this life, if you're born poor or you have a handicap, is because of the evils you did in the past life. So you're getting what you deserve. But there was suffering in that life, and well, there was a life before that life, and you end up in an endless, infinite regression of lives in which you make evil eternal, which doesn't solve anything, it just makes it eternal. Or you arrive at a first life for which there was no previous life to explain the suffering you had in that life. So it does not solve the problem of evil. Matter of fact, it creates evil because it teaches you not to interfere with human suffering. No hospitals, no orphanages, let them die. They're getting what they deserve. Secondly, they say it's true because people recall it uh, either naturally or under hip, uh, hypnosis or they go to Madame Zsa, Zsa and for $50 they tell you uh, she could say, yes, you were one of the vastal virgins in the great temple of Isis or whatever it is and pay your money, thank you very much. Or deja vu, uh, that feeling, you've been here or you know these people. But all of those are so scientifically disproven and inaccurate and so riddled with fraud, they're impossible. Thirdly, they claim that the Bible teaches reincarnation, such as that John the Baptist was Elijah. And they really say that. And usually I give two arguments. I would say, 
who is the one person who should really know whether or not John the Baptist was Elijah? John the Baptist. And they went to him and said, are you Elijah? And he said, no. no. Does that satisfy you? And they say, no. I said, well, let me give you the final, final answer. In order to be reincarnated, you have to first die. Elijah never died. He was alive on the Mount of Transfiguration. He went to glory without death. Enoch, Elijah. How can John the Baptist be Elijah reincarnated when he never died to begin with? They claim that Jesus taught it by saying you must be born again, but we know from James the new birth is through the Word and it's through faith in Christ and it's regeneration, not reincarnation. Then the last argument, the early Christians taught it. The church, the, uh, these ancient church councils took it out of the Bible and hid it. But when you ask them what council, what date, who was there, where's the man, they always contradict themselves. And before you know it, they finally tell you, well, they only heard about it, but they never saw any evidence. And, well, there isn't any evidence. It was destroyed. So the proof that it happened is that there isn't any evidence. Which, of course, I can prove anything by that methodology. <laughs> I could say, your, your parents, when they died, left me all the money, but there's no will because you destroyed it. And the fact that there's no will proves that you owe me all the money because that proves that they gave it to me because of the will that which doesn't exist. <laughs> but the Bible teaches that when you die, you don't go into the ground, you don't dissipate into the air, you go either into the presence of Christ, absent from the body, present with the Lord, or you are put under conscious punishment in Hades to await the judgment day. So it's either you go into the presence of our Lord Savior through faith in Him, or you will suffer not endless reincarnation coming back again and again and again and again and again and again, but you will go to what we could call hell to await the judgment when ultimately the lake of fire. So reincarnation is not true, and the arguments are not valid, and we've disproved them over and over and over again. Can I add one thing? Sure. In addition to the atoning work of Christ, making karma unnecessary, the resurrection of the body makes it impossible. When Jesus was resurrected, he didn't have 42 bodies like Edgar Cayce, who claimed that Jesus had been recycled 42 times. You have a date with destiny when you will stand before God. You will be held accountable as a moral agent. You will be reconstituted body and soul. Reincarnation cannot give you that one body in which you will stand before God. So the resurrection of the body makes it impossible, just like the atonement makes it unnecessary.